Now, how'd you start off with the Everest? How'd you get into the guiding? Were well, you somebody's cousin or uh, some Sirdar? Uh, well, no, no. Uh, so when I was uh, when I was ten years old, so I believe I was a sixth grade. I don't remember exactly what grade I was. So there was a commercial uh, song or ad on the radio. We have a little Panasonic radio that would say, "Oh, I attend the which means in Nepali language that our hero Tenzin came, you know, came from all the way top of the world and so and so. And, you know, so that inspired me. So, wow. So, you know, then I, I studied about Everest, you know, so at the school. So, you know, we talk about the mountain and stuff. And, Obviously, I also see the mountain from my, you know, my backyard. Right. And so, as I'm like, wow, this is, you know, this is something I want to try, you know, uh, you know, once in my life. And so... Now, how about relatives? There's some other relative was some big surdar and... Back then, uh, there was nobody from part of my family. Uh, uh, later on... When I start, uh, you know, from kitchen boy, then at the same time, my uncle, my my dad, youngest brother, become a sardar. And then later on, when I was a guide, when I become a guide, so, you know, then he ended up having his own office. He was working for Nepal Himal, which is part of the mountain travel people. You know, they're separated from that. And then, so my uncle was working for Nepal Himo. Then, so then he got separated, I believe it was 94. I don't remember. So, you were a kitchen boy? I just, I started as a kitchen boy. Right, everybody does. Right? Yeah. The hardest job in the world. Yeah. Carrying all the pots and pans. I know. Running down the trail. You know, getting there early, setting up, getting all this stuff, smiling to the people. <laughs> yeah, but my point is then, so, you know, I was doing lots of tree climbing, rock climbing, you know, and, uh, you know, so running stuff, not normal. In right, the right, no, yeah. it's the normal. But then when I was age of 14, so my, my, my parents, you know, made me uh, get married. Well, they arranged me for getting married, and I, I said no, I can't do it. It was the from my wife's side, you know, my, my in-law, my father-in-law is the one that came to me for my parents. Says, okay, so I wanna, you know, pose my daughter to your son. So you know, and they're they're a good friend, you know. Yeah, right. No, a reasonable right. proposition. Yeah. So and uh, me and my wife at the same time, we are going to same school, you know. So and uh, they're everybody teasing me. So then <laughs> I, I told them, you know, I don't want to get married, so and so. But they says no, this is the right thing to do, you know. The, and back then, there's even there was a, the law was existing that. Guy has to be 21, girl has to be 18. That's that's the law has always been there. But then back in the countryside where there's no road, no telephone, nothing. So who cares, right? So they do whatever they want to do. And so, but you know, they forced me to get married. And uh, so there's nothing I can do. Uh, then I, after I got married, I was continuing school. And they say, you know, they, they, they teach me a lot, you know, and so is my wife. I said, this is not working for me, this is ruining my life. So I just ran away. You just so, ran away? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. So I just ran away to Kathmandu. And then so after that, you know, so I, 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 I start my first, uh, so I talked to the people, so how do I get jobs, so and so, and then I started as a kitchen boy. And then, so then I went to the mountaining school, which, you know. Which oh, great. NMA, Nepal Mountain Association. And also that I went to the guiding, you know, 
to become a Sudar, I wanted to guide the school. So it took me two years. So I got both of the certificate as a certified climber yeah. and also certified guide. And then, so after that, you know, so I become a guide. So. Yeah, wow. Wow. So this was your your own personal power yes. that brought you there. And So and somebody tries to tell you something else, you're not going to listen. No. My, <laughs> even my parents, they, they always put me down. Oh, okay, the, the detailed history. Then after that, I was like, Ken Ketman do. So the first season, the first three months, so I made 3500 Okay? 3500 then I, you know, for the off season, I was going back to the village to see family and parents and stuff. You know, so I want to keep the. It doesn't matter how 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 much they destroy my life, but I, I'm not look back. I'm not gonna look back. Say, you know what? F you. No, I'm always, you know, people person. I always like to keep the family. Respect the family. Yeah, forgive and forget. Exactly. So, anyway, so f for the first time I met 3,500 rupees, and guess what happened? Gambling. No. Drinking? I mean, then I was six, no, 15 years old. Okay, okay. I was 15 years old. You know, in Kathmandu, it's like a spin. You put your wallet here with the money, nobody taught me. So somebody, you know, the uh, pocket picker grabbed my wallet, okay? And then uh, I got a tatapani, which you already know what tatapani is. So we stopped there, and then, you know, I'm trying to have a lunch, you know, and I want to look my wallet, there's no wallet. I got so depressed. Okay, when I was coming to Kathmandu, it happened the same way. When I'm going back home, it's now it's the same way. Now I gotta ask how, what kind of karma that I'm having right now? <laughs> okay, so I, then I end up carrying somebody share, you know, to, I'm sorry. I, I end up carrying, you know, somebody's uh, stuff to, so they can take me home. Okay, so they're not too far from my hometown. Okay, I will. You'll carry their gear if they feed their, you on the way home. On the way home. Oh, uh, because you lost your money in yeah. the pickpocket. Yeah. Oh, what a bitch! <laughs> oh okay. God. And then, then I went home, and what you know, and my mom and dad is expecting. So okay, now his hope he's doing something, something. You know, that that's their hope, right? because I'm the oldest son. I mean, I do have something, but when I told this story, they don't believe it, okay? <laughs> and they, I mean, they're, I mean, they check all my bag, even when I was going to bed at night, they would check into all my under, you know, arm, maybe <laughs> I'm, maybe the things that I'm hiding, you know, from them. They don't believe it. And the next time, you know, when the season is start, I want to come back to Kathmandu. I ask, you know, money, you know, to help me to get Kathmandu. They says no. They never give me, they never give me zero money. They never give me penny, dime. So after the second time, I come back, you know, then I went to Sherpa from Kitchen Boy before I become a guy, but I continue my school, you know, and then so, I think the second time, was, I was still 15, end of the year, uh, I made about 10,000 rupees. Then I went back home, I show them, I give the money to them, but then when I come back, they never give me again. I said, screw this, you know, they kept putting me down and putting me down and putting me down, mm -hmm. so, you know, and after I, that, I got kind of a depressed, yeah. you know, and, uh, but I, I never let down myself, uh, I, I always look up, 
know I have something that I can do. I have the confidence. Uh, I know that you know I I trust myself, and I will do good. So after that, then I I end up getting you know. So when I start guiding it, you know, then I start because I take care of people, and all the people that come back, they always request me as a, their guide. Oh, I want jungle. I want jungle. Sometimes at the you know. I have like five groups lined up at the same time and I have to, you know, take them half, half away and then I have to go out of the group sometimes. So when I was 20, uh, I believe that's uh, 1992, then I got my first expedition, Choyu Expeditions. And I made, uh, back then, I made about $5,000. That's a lot of money back then, you know. You mm, dairy pizza. So yeah, a then lot of I started I start buying property, I started building houses, and my parents are like, okay, now we want more money. So, did I owe you any? But then they kept saying, well, yeah, you are my son. You're supposed to pay back us now because we gave you the birth. Okay, so... Something like that, I told you, do whatever, you know, give me birth or something. You know, we have that conversation in person, you know, in a, in a private, but they never figured out the way I felt, you know. But, but, you know, so, but I did prove it, I did prove it, you know, I worked hard and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, from the 92, I continue to have uh, like three expeditions of the years. You know, even there's only two seasons, but there's, you know, there's enough so, time. Yeah, enough time that I can manage the other expedition. 96, I was handling four expeditions Swedish, Taiwan, two American expeditions. So, and, you know, same thing, 97, I was uh, handling to Everest expeditions mm -hmm. and you know people are kept asking me and uh, now I become a more commercialized myself. I shouldn't say more commercialized, I should say professionalized. Right. You know people recognize me, what I do, right. how hard I work, you know because I always put people first, make sure that they're, they're safe, make sure there's effective communication, mm -hmm. you know, so that way nobody gets hurt nobody get lost or you know whatever so all the way United States spend so much money to have a you know to have a, their dream pillful or do the good things for the other people so people can see what is Everest is all about it you know so I said okay no mind I will take the camera to the summit so we got the successful you know we made the movie successful then I came here 1998 to promote the movie. We came here, I mean, uh, in 1998, so I flew all over the United States with the IMAX camera, all the IMAX theater. So we, we gave a presentation, we, you know, we did the official show, it was in public then. Then I went back. China, not Japan, Korea, China. Then 2001, I came back. When I came back, I came back with a $1,500 because that's what you need to have in a, you know, in your pocket and plus on the passport. Make sure you have the $1,500. So, a friend of mine bought the ticket for me, but I only had the $1,500 cash in my pocket as a dollar goes. Then I came here, I stayed in Colorado Springs. I started working for 22 different orthopedic doctors. Few of them, they summited with me back in 95 from the north side on Everest. And so I was working as a part of the uh, managers. And then I worked there from 2001 to 2004. 
so took then my kids are about to come here, you know, but my kids grew up in Kathmandu. The, the, I know they're not going to like it for a rather because the, the weather, the condition on the, the snow, everything, because they've never been exposed to snow. You know, they're not going to like it. And, uh, and 2004, I says, I packed everything, I rent a U-Haul, took it, everything to the Goodwill, and I just have a few extra change clothes myself. And I says, well, if I can make a live, living from moving from Nepal to Colorado Spring, I'm sure I can make a living somewhere in California. So I drove from Colorado Spring to all the way down to San Diego. I stayed down there in San Diego for about a week. And then, so I didn't really like the San Diego. I like the place, but there's something I not connected to San Diego, in San Diego. Then I went to the Mammoth Lake. I went there about a week. Uh, okay, maybe it's too small town for me. I love the mountain, but it's a little too small. And then, so then I continued to, you know, come uh, toward the north, California. Then I came to, I, I came to uh, uh, Lake Tahoe. Then I stayed there a week. Didn't quite connect. Then I dropped all the way to Santa Rosa. So maybe, you know, this, maybe this is the place. So then I, I, I rent a motel for a week until I can find the apartment. Then after a week, I found a two-bed apartment. I think back then it was about 1200 bucks, 2004. And so I, you know, then I applied the job. I started going on online, applied the job, a company called Medtronic. Okay, so I worked there at Medtronic about six months, wasn't paying enough. I was getting 18 bucks, you know, so that's not going to make it for me to live, you know, my living style. Then I looked another job, then there was a plumbing company that was looking for a sales rep. So I applied, so I started from $26, so, and, you know, okay, you, got, you, 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 you consider higher. Before I got higher, I should go a little bit back. So I, I had the interview tomorrow, right? Because I, the office was down in San Rafael. So the guy gave me one of the, okay, this uh, Anderson court or whatever. I'm, you know, I got down there, I, I, I'm looking at, at, back then I don't have a GPS, I'm looking math, I can't find him. So I'm already like, 45 minutes later, I kept calling the guy and said, look, I can't find the place. So you, I'm here at this place. Is there any way you can come pick me up? I mean, you know, I can follow you. Okay, so the guy finally came there. You know, he, he could have said, you know, screw you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so most I, likely I, I would. Yeah. <laughs> that guy they can't even find you. Yeah. You know? But. Uh, n so when I says, can you, can you, I'm, I'm waiting here, I will wait here, can you come get me? So when he says yes, then I tell, okay, now good karma is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So then he came, so I had the interview, you know, and he was uh, also, you know, he was from Canada. He loved the climbing, he loved skiing. And when he heard the Sherpa, you know, then I guess he, uh, he and I got connected right away. And he says, all right, go to work today. And then the guy, you know, who I want to work with, it. so, you know, when he see my, you know, my, the way I deal with the people, he saw right away, he says, oh, you need to keep this guy. This guy has mentality. And uh, the guy gave me right away dollars. The way it's twenty-seven dollars. And six months later, I was making thirty-five dollars. And then about eight months later, I was making forty-five dollars. 
And then after that, I was generating over $100,000 a month. And I said, you know what, Dan? I'm going to go 33% commissions. Here. Because now there's a lot of company looking for me. You know, lots of competitors are looking for me. Dan says, Dan, he says, okay. So, you know, I mean, I did good, you know. So I was making about almost 30 grand a month, you know. And uh, then I saved all that money from 2004 to 2013. I don't know how many years is that. But I saved all my money. I didn't go party. I didn't spend, you know, nice Lexus or luxury, you know. I just have a car that can get me A to B. But as soon as I get a company, I have a company bagel. Okay. So I didn't never wear a nice clothes that I, I wanted, you know. So I just want to save money. Then I saved, you know, good amount of money. Then when it's 2010 and 11, when everything went down, that's when I started investing everything. And today, you know, from $1,500, 2001 to 2018, that's 17 years. So, you know, my trust, according to my trust, I'm probably worth it over seven millions. American dream. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. A village come the boy comes from the village and now he's a big success in America. Struggling, struggling, struggling. Of course the struggle is the part of the slowly, story slowly that slowly everybody leaves out the struggling part. <laughs> you know? Slowly, slowly in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. I know Thank you struggled, you. I know you worked. Yeah. I've seen it with so many guys. In Nepal, yeah. there's no chance for earning. Yeah. They so when have they the see mentality, the chance, what yeah, they yeah. want to do more, they're very humble, hungry people. Yeah. But there's no right. opportunity. Right. So when they see the opportunity, yeah. they take it. You know, so good luck. I mean, cheers. You know, you know. Um, and more to come. You're still young. Yeah. You know. Uh, we're looking at closing hamburger range a few days. Yeah, I want to kind of stop on that one.